How do we experience the world? What forces are at play in shaping the present? How do we imagine our future? These are questions central to my creative practice, working with electronics and electronic media, not new media. The following is a brief tour of that practice, very brief. It's through circuit bending that I've come to understand technology as a fluid and dynamic network of social uh, relationships and as a, an evolving and malleable cultural construct. Circuit bending is the art of the creative short circuit and is a wild variant of hardware hacking. By opening a device and short circuiting its electronics, closed systems can become open platforms for creativity and expression. Circuit bending was my gateway into electrical engineering as a tool for learning how the world is put together and how knowledge of that world can be used to imagine it differently. I first learned how to modify and then extend existing devices, building my own musical instruments, audio video, video instruments, and then sound installations. In much of this and the rest of my work, feedback, feedback plays a central role as both process and metaphor. By connecting input to output, simple systems can take on surprising complexities and even lives of their own. And as a grad student at CalArts, I study music composition and integrated media working extensively with feedback, sometimes also involving my own body in the feedback loop. Here I've wired my arms to receive mild electric shocks, controlled by the sound, but also you see that sound visualized as bursts of light. It was this obsession with feedback that inspired me to take on a series of interactive, or produce a series of interactive neural networks. This first is capable of listening, seeing, and responding to visitors in a series of bird-like chirps. The second is a network of lights controlled by light sensors, and it's arranged in a sort of formation of constellations that can be influenced by interaction. The third fully integrates light and sound in a web light network that responds to both light, sound, and also temperature. While developing these works, my audio and visual performance practices became very much more refined and distilled. Sound and visual materials were reduced to their primary essences. Through feedback, mixing boards alone became primary instruments, and video content was reduced to simple visualizations of sounds via solid state relays to turn lights on and off. To date, an intermixing of raw sound and light have figured prominently in my performances and installations. About two years ago, I began circuit bending digital cameras, kind of in, to induce hallucinations in these machines that we rely upon so heavily to relate our visual impressions of the world to one another. By experimenting with different printing methods, I was able to probe the relationship between digital image making and digital photography within the context of traditional photographic image making. Last fall, a colleague inspired me to explore computerized textile manufacturing as a photographic medium in its own right. The Glitch Textiles project takes these broken images and weaves them into fabrics. After completing a successful fundraising campaign on Kickstarter, I'm looking deeper into exploring these extended techniques for computer-aided textile production. Year of the Glitch is a year-long Glitch-a-day project that I started at the beginning of this year. The goal is to explore glitch art from within as a process where slippage between information systems produces digital artifacts which are then used as raw material for the creation of new works. If circuit bending can be said to be the art of the creative short circuit, then glitch art is the art of the digital artifact. These two practices, along with handmade electronics and my work with light and sound, are connected by this thread, this idea of extended techniques for electronics and electronic media. Listening to the Ocean on a Shore of Gypsum Sand is a collaborative project developed by Gene Kogan, Dan Ticine, and myself, in which algorithmically generated seashells are 3D printed as curiosities to be listened to. As it turns out, they actually sound very much like actual seashells. But if we hear the ocean when we press a real shell to our ears, what ocean is it that we're listening to through these numerically generated ones? And what about the child who has never heard an actual seashell before, never listened to that ocean, but first experiences one of these? 
With this and other projects, I'm asking, how is our technology shaping our perception of the world and our relationship to it and each other? Thank you.